Well, hello everybody, this is Rishi Raj, and in this video I will be giving you a brief idea about the basic format for technical report writing. Mm, that was a good start. Primarily, we will be only concentrating about the three major elements of the report, that is the introduction, the discussion, and the conclusion. Okay, so to start with, let's look at the cover page. The cover page is usually the first page of a technical report. On the cover page, you can see the classification on the top left corner, which could be normal, confidential, top secret, classified, based on the type of the information the report holds. Then on the top right corner comes the report number. You can put any random alphanumeric number with at least five digits, just so it looks good. Next, you have the name of the organization, along with the place it is situated in, followed by the title of the report and the date which comes at the bottom of the page. And make sure you align all these elements in the center. Next comes the title page. The title page is a little more descriptive than the cover page and has names and designations of person for whom you are making the report, followed by the name and designation of the person making the report and the one who approves the re report. Except the last element, everything on the title page will be center aligned. Next up is the preface. The preface is, a is written by the author of the report. It contains his views and opinions about the subject of the report. The preface is followed by acknowledgments. This section has five paragraphs. The first paragraph is an overall acknowledgement note to whoever has helped in the development of the report, that is, the general public. The second paragraph is more of a courtesy note to the high authority of the organization for which you are writing the report. The third paragraph is a real thanking note to the people who have directly helped you develop and compile the report. The fourth para is dedicated to moral support moral and emotional support. And lastly, in the fifth paragraph, you acknowledge the secretary without whose support, the report wouldn't have been completed. Next, we have the list of tables and figures, which enlists all the tables and figures like pie charts, bar graphs, etc., along with the page number they appear at. After this comes the abstract. It states in brief the idea behind the report what it aims at, and how will it be beneficial for the organization. Following this is the table of contents. It enlists all the elements in the report in a sequential order along with their page numbers. Observe that the elements before the instruction are written in italics and numbered using lower Roman numerals. The rest of the elements follow the decimal numbering system for serialization depending on their hierarchy and the page numbers are written using Arabic numerals, which, you, which is the usual number system that we follow in everyday life. Note that the bibliography, gloss, glossary, appendix, and index are also in italics. This brings us to the first prime element of our discussion, the introduction. The introduction has seven elements. The first element is the note of authorization. It contains the title of the report, the name, and the designation of the personnel who, is authorized, who has authorized you to write the report and the date of authorization. Second comes the historical background. Here we need to answer questions such as, when did the problem arise? What exactly is the problem? How is it affecting the organization? And what actions has been undertaken until now? Another thing to note is that here you should not mention as to why the problem arose. The third element is the objective and it states the aim of the report and suggests a plausible solution for the problem. Fourth comes the scope. The scope comprises of the areas of classification which have been con taken into consideration while writing the report. These can be identified such as age groups to number of family members 
geographic regions or financial status etc then comes the limitations here simply mention the areas of classification stating nothing else were considered except them due to time and financial crisis on the sixth we have methodology here we need to mention the procedure by which the survey was conducted it could be polls questionnaires or personal interviews whatever do mention the exact number of the exact number or percentage of the people surveyed and the criteria for selecting these candidates also don't forget to refer to the appendix as it will contain a detailed description of the methods undertaken for the survey the seventh and the last element of the report is the preview it contains one line description of each section apart from the introduction. The second element, the, the discussion, comprises of the major chunk of the report. It evaluates and justifies all the collected data. Here the author, author tries to figure out the possible explanations for the trends observed in the data collected. The headings of the discussion can be identified from the table provided by identifying the row or the column that sums up to 100 or which is closest to 100. Each topic of discussion has three points. First, the justification for the highest percentile on, the, on a category. Second, the explanation for the lowest percentage. And third, a short explanation for the intermediate trends. Make sure you mention the percentages wherever you justify them. Discussion topics also have figures which represent the data using pie charts, bar graphs, block diagrams, and other illustrations. Make sure you mention a reference note for figures wherever you refer them in your explanation. The third element is the conclusion. Here, the first para contains an overall conclusion of the report, followed by the conclusions for each topics of discussion in separate paragraphs. You must remember two things while writing conclusions. It must not contain any new reasons besides the one mentioned in discussion. You must not specify the figures again in conclusion. After this, we have recommendations which is an optional element and contains suggestions that may help solve the problem observed in the report. Here again, you have an overall recommendation followed by the recommendations for each topic of discussion. Lastly, we have bibliography that lists all resources, that is books, periodicals, articles, etc., from which the data had been extracted in making the report. Okay, finally we have glossary which contains the definitions of all the jargon used in alphabetical order. Next we have appendix which has the details of the methods used during the survey like questionnaire, interview questions, polls, etc. And finally the index which contains the detailed list of the specific information available in the report and helps us indicate a topic, a subtopic, or any other important aspects of the contents. Well, this brings us to the end of this video, and I hope you all find it helpful and enjoy watching it. And thanks to the few who enjoy hearing me. Haha. <laughs> well, anyway, all the best to you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you again.